I too had learned to go within, not use my voice. This was my inheritance. I didn't need Carl Jung to tell me that these dreams were pointing to latent anger, long buried, now bubbling up and threatening to rise to the surface. I chose to try and expel some of that anger in a rage room. Shortly after the latest in parenting disagreements with my husband, I made an appointment at a place called Rage Industry in Seattle. My schedule as a busy mother did not align with their openings in the short term, so I booked a slot a couple months out. Like it seemed with everything else, what I wanted would have to wait. But no matter, I had no doubt that I'd still have enough to fuel me by then. The day of my appointment, I contemplated canceling. I rechecked their website, seeing that cancellations had to be made with at least three days notice, a more than fair policy. You would think that the prospect of forfeiting my money was enough to get me in the car, but still I was prepared to stay home. What proved to be the ultimate motivator was asking myself if I would regret going. My answer, probably not. I arrived early and stayed in my car. I wasn't allowed to go in until my appointment time anyway, but I also recalled reading that music was allowed, so I created a short playlist for the 20 minutes I would be allotted. I arrived and the employee was on the phone in a heated discussion with a customer who was canceling her appointment same day and was upset that she would still be charged. I smirked, thinking I had almost canceled that day too, though I would have accepted the no-show charge without protest. I wondered how many rude clients this joint dealt with on a daily basis, and if it was higher than average for a customer service job, since, after all, it was anger that had brought us here in the first place. The place was small and somewhat industrial, pretty close to what I imagined for an establishment whose purpose is for folks to go in and smash shit. I signed a waiver that notably included a possibility of punctured organs, and then I was ready to make my selections. I carefully surveyed their shelves of glassware, ceramics, and picture frames. If I remember correctly, I assembled a couple of empty bottles, some glasses, one ceramic mug, and one picture frame. My med medley, all in a crate for me to carry into the room. I wore a white coverall, zipping it as closely up to my chin as possible. Goggles covered my eyes. I tucked in my hair, lest stray bits of broken glass land in it. After a brief overview of the room, its contents and policies, I entered alone with a combination of curiosity and trepidation. I hooked up my playlist to their Bluetooth and started blasting it, selecting a baseball bat as my first instrument to wield. It was awkward to begin. I wished the walls were soundproof, but they were not, so I knew the employee could hear everything. I let out a weak cry, then broke my first glass with the bat. It felt strange and forced. I felt some embarrassment too, but reminded myself that this guy worked here and he hears stuff every day like this. And it's probably so, so jaded that he wasn't thinking about me at all. So I continued on with more items and more things with which to break them. I swung the golf club like it was scoring under par. I brought down the hammer like I was forging the yellow orange glow of the sword. I also hold some things against the wall taking small satisfaction in their shattering in a strength I didn't know I had. 20 minutes was apple time since things break so quickly. As I was nearing the end of my slot, I played the final song. It wasn't the 90s vocals of Alanis Morissette or punk music this time, but a light indie rock song that I hadn't allowed myself to listen to in full since 2016, the year my life first went to shit by my own hand. That one song housed my most painful memory, and I had added it to the playlist, knowing its chords would be my kindling. The gentle guitar opening set me off, even before the crooning came. Through tears and fogged up goggles, I let out a yell with all the force and fury that I could muster. The anguish wrenched itself from me, tearing out my throat as I felt the most rage of all, which was toward myself far more than it was toward anyone else. With wild abandon, I tried to smash my mistakes, hurl my shortcomings against the wall as I sent glass shards shooting into oblivion. I moved like a madwoman and felt even more like one. And I had saved the picture frame for this last round, 
pretending it was an image of the future I was supposed to have, the one that I had ruined, the fuck up that I couldn't forgive myself for. Hello, my name is Christy Onyx. This is my response to Before You Implode. I've got red hair, a rainbow and white tank top, and a maroon cloak. I'm in a studio surrounded by hardware synthesizers, a very active theremin, a teacup, and some rope. Thank you so much. Thank you.